Welcome back. I've just eaten almost half a bag of pistachios. Beautiful. Okay, if you've been here for a while, you might remember the video where we figured out Sherlock Holmes's secret rooftop hideaway overlooking beautiful Manhattan. In this video, we're gonna figure out where the actor who plays Sherlock lives. OSINT or Open Source Intelligence is usually a starting point for people who want to become investigators or even get into cybersecurity because it can get quite technical at the far ends of it. But at the early ends of it, the sort of easier part, Google Maps, Google searches, things like that, it's quite fun, it's quite accessible, anybody can do it. And armed with just some very simple basic information and maybe a couple of photographs, you would be amazed at the things that you can find. Elliot Higgins, the guy behind Bellingcat, the online investigative journalist type website, he knows everything there is to know about OSINT pretty much. And he's used those techniques and much more to figure out things like the Novichok poisonings in Salisbury, it's crazy. OSINT is very, very powerful. So let me show you what we're working with. This is our starting point, an article that says Johnny Lee Miller, the guy who plays Sherlock in that TV show, met up with his ex-wife, Angelina Jolie, you may have heard of her, in his Brooklyn apartment with some wine. Sounds nice. And it says his apartment is in a place called Dumbo, which borders the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm not gonna spend any more time on this sleazy website. That's it gone. This is a map of New York. And if we type Dumbo, you'll see that Google Maps gives us this lovely highlighted area in red. You got these parks, you got the Manhattan Bridge and the Brooklyn Bridge. So Dumbo's a pretty small area. We could walk the streets and see if we can find the doors that Angelina walked through. I've got them saved here on my desktop. Two photographs. One is slightly more important than the other. We'll start with this one. Angelina leaving the building via the left door. Here is another door. And if we go to this picture, you'll notice that there's actually three doors, one on the left, one in the middle, and one on the right. We're looking for three gold doors. Inside that doorway, there's a vent that might be useful just in case we get an angle. There's also a crack on the pavement and a sort of line that runs along underneath her toes. You've also got two pieces of A4 paper in the left door. You've got two pieces of paper in the middle door and two pieces of paper in the right door. The pieces of paper on the right hand side are higher up than the pieces of paper on the left hand side. That's an important confirmatory detail in case there are multiple sets of doors that go into this building. And the reason why I say this is the most important picture is because we get to see the reflection. And if you just look here, this pole and its base plate and the other one, that's scaffolding. And you can also see it here in the bottom left corner. This little white thing stops Angelina's lovely coat and bag getting ripped. If she was to walk past that bolt, it might scratch things. That's a little protective cover. And that is actually the scaffolding pole there. So how do we find these gold doors in Dumbo? Well, we walk the streets. I'm gonna start on the left hand side and work my way to the right. You don't want to walk down every little side street just yet. We just want to walk the main streets, learn the area, get the hang of it, and just peek down the side streets to see if anything jumps out at us. Now, I must be honest, I know where the apartment is. When I first did this, I found it within 60 seconds, and you'll see why. I'm gonna grab the little guy in the bottom right hand corner and just drop it on here. Now I'm on Water Street. Goodness me, the weather looks nice. So let's head along the street. And I'm just clicking on the ground. Peek down here. Nope, doesn't look right. Let's look along here. Get to the next junction. Here's scaffolding. Quite a lot of scaffolding in this area. And this is where he piqued my interest. I saw the scaffolding and immediately thought, this is an area where we need to look a little bit deeper. There's no gold doors here. 
doesn't look obvious down here. So I headed north first. And the second I clicked up in here, I noticed these doors on the right, case closed. But we can go much further. If we click on the door and zoom in, we can indeed see our little posters here. The middle ones are lower than the right ones. We already saw that in our image. There they are. The middle ones are lower than the right ones. This is the right set of doors. One of the things you might wonder is, what's this building called? You can zoom out on Google Maps and have a look, or you can just read the, oh, it's blurry. So it says one main street, but that's blurred out. Sometimes Google does this, they blur out the names of things. Clearly they don't blur out the names of everything. That sign is there. For some reason it blurred out this name. But if we just move back a frame, you can see it says the W-A-L-E something T-A-S Wallentas building. Let's move back again. Let's see if we get a different angle. There we go, the Wallentas building. A quick zip around the block, which I have done, shows that there are no other gold doors that go into this building. This is the entrance that Angelina walked into and came out of. So if you wanna to go touch those door handles, these are the ones. <laughs> you might be wondering, okay, where do we go from here? Well, we know the building, if we really were weird and stalkery, we could just sit here and wait for Johnny to walk his dog. Don't do that. But natural curiosity says, well, where in this building does he live? Is he ground floor, top floor? This side of the building, the other side of the building, can we figure it out? We can. And this is where multi-sourced information comes into the picture. We took a couple of photographs and a piece of text from the Daily Mail's website. And now we're gonna go to Johnny Lee Miller's Instagram profile and see what we get there. Now I've already done this. He's got photographs of his children and things on Instagram. I don't want that on here. So I saved the pictures down and here they are. These are the two most interesting photographs that we need. This one looks a little bit strange because it could be taken from a rooftop. It could be taken from a street potentially. I've never been here, so I don't know if there's streets that are up this high. But if we come here and look at this photograph, you can see that it's very much taken from within the apartment. This is his beautiful little cat. And if you look at the bridge underneath, inside the sky, you'll see the little line. That is part of the framework that holds the bridge up. If we go back here, you can see it's in the exact same position. So both photographs are taken from within the apartment. This one's a little bit clearer, so I prefer to work with this one. Now let's make it a little bit bigger. This is where you have to think like a sniper or a photographer even. If I was a sniper, on this building in the background, I would need to be anywhere from here and above to get the bullet over the Brooklyn Bridge superstructure, which is this big structure here. So we can use that. We can find this on Google Maps, Apple Maps, Bing Maps, whatever it is, and line it up with something on the Brooklyn Bridge. And that should point to an end of the building to narrow down our search. Bear with me. Let's just draw a line from the antenna straight down. And if you look, it almost lines up perfectly with the top of the arch here on the Brooklyn Bridge, which means we should jump into Google Maps, put ourselves on this building, draw a line between that building through the Brooklyn Bridge's arch, and wherever it hits the building, that's where this photograph was taken. Now it won't give us the elevation, it won't be super accurate, but it's pretty close. So let's do it. This is the building. And if we come back, here's the Brooklyn Bridge. And it's this right hand side, which is the left hand side from the image. We wanna line that up with somewhere on the building and we're gonna use this spiky building to do it. So let's go find that spiky antenna type building. Let's just zoom in here. And it is this building here, this big white one in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it like this. 
I'm going to take a screenshot. I use this little app called CleanShot X. I believe it's just for the Mac. That's what I'm making these videos with, CleanShot X. But it's a really nice screenshot tool. I appreciate this might look confusing. Let me just get rid of these for you. Let's number a few things. Number one is the building. Number two is the Brooklyn Bridge. And number three, bang, is the spiky building. Let's draw a line using the line tool. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. We're going to go from the spike through the bridge onto the building. And we're going through the right hand side of the bridge. Boom. Close enough. And as you can see, it suggests that we should be focusing our effort on that top right corner of the building. It may be the case that he lives somewhere here within these windows. We know from the picture with the cute little cat, there's some green plants and things. The cat's probably not gonna be there. The plants might not even be there. He might not even live here anymore. This was 2021, but it's a good exercise nonetheless. You could go to the local area with a pretty big lens and try and photograph the windows to see if you can see some green plants. It'd be easier at nighttime when there's less reflections from the sky. But also if we actually look at the windows, you'll notice that the penthouse, he's an actor, money, penthouse, makes sense. The penthouse has rectangular windows. The floor underneath the penthouse has these sort of arched windows. And then all the floors beneath that have the rectangular ones. So if you go and look on Instagram, maybe you get another view of those windows in a video or a picture. And if they're arched, well then you know it's probably one of these four windows. Now, I don't know how big these apartments are, probably huge. So it may be all four windows. We could go and look through property sale websites and try and see pictures from inside these apartments to try and figure that out. But you get the point. We took some pictures from the news and a word that said Dumbo. We then figured out the building location. We then went to Instagram. We found photographs that gave us an angle to other buildings. And then we used those buildings to trace back to where the photograph was taken from. That's not bad, right? Before I started this exercise, I had no idea where this person lived. I had no interest in even figuring out where they lived, but it was through doing the Sherlock Holmes video, which I'll link below, this idea came about and we were successful in figuring it out. Do we have the exact address, like the room number? No, we don't. Could we get it? We probably could. So that's it for today. Be careful what you post online. Remember, you have no idea when you're going to be targeted and who is going to target you. It's kind of terrifying, really, isn't it? Maybe I should shut down this channel.